Welcome to my channel. If you like my videos, then kindly subscribe, like, and watch. Thank you. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Problem nine point one, chapter number nine. The statement of problem is that for the loading shown in the beam, determine the equation of elastic curve for the cantilever beam AB. The second part is deflection at the free end, and the third part is slope at the free end. So you can see the figure nine point one. This is a cantilever beam that is acted upon by load P at the free end. So in part we have to find we have to find number one equation of elastic curve equation of elastic curve that is y is equal to function of x. In part B we have been asked to find the deflection at the free end. Clear. So y at free end, which is the y max, free end, and in third part it is given that slope at the free end. So slope at free end. Also, if you look at the end, the end point is B. So you can also say that y B and theta b so let's start with the solution of problem so as you know that uh, for finding the slope and deflection we have equation that is e i into d square y over d x square is equal to m of x clear so first we need to find the moment equation for this beam and then this moment will be used in this equation in order to find the equation of elastic curve slope slope and deflection so let's start let we section the beam at this point and this point is at a distance of x from the fix and a so you can use this equation uh, this section and this section as well i will use this section so let draw the section so let this is the required section clear so there is a four, uh, concentrated load p that is acting clear so this length is uh, the, this length is x so the remaining will be equal to l minus x clear so this length is l minus x now if you cut the beam at this section so definitely there will be a shear force acting and there will be a movement at this point and this point is let this point is j point clear so this is the shear force and this is at and b now uh, you can apply the movement equation so sum of all movement about point j is equal to zero so you can see at this j point there is a moment that is acting in clockwise so we have taken uh, counterclockwise as a positive so you can see there is a moment m in clockwise so that would be equal to minus m and due to this load p it also producing a clockwise rotation so p into perpendicular distance is l minus x L minus x there sum must be equal to 0 so we will get moment will be equal to minus P into L minus x or you can say that minus P into L plus P into x so this is the moment equation for the above beam clear now we will use let this equation is equation number a so put equation one in equation a we will get we will get e i into d square y or dx square 
is equal to minus P L plus P into X. Okay. So we will integrate it both side of the equation of this equation. So if you integrate it once, so it will be equal to E I into D Y by D X is equal to minus P L X and it will be equal to P X square over 2 plus there will be a constant C1. Clear? If you again integrate this equation, so you will get E I. I will write it again. Integrate it so e i into y will be equal to minus p l square p l x square over 2 and it will be p x cube over 6 p x cube over 6 it will become equal to c 1 x and plus there is another sign uh, constant of integration clear so now you have two equation let this is equation number two and this is equation number three now we will use the boundary condition in order to find this unknown c1 and c2 so if you look at this beam so at fix and we see that at fix and x is equal to zero so deflection will be equal to 0 and at this fix and at x is equal to 0 the slope will be equal to 0 clear so we will use this boundary condition so first we will use the this boundary condition at using boundary condition condition at x is equal to 0 y is deflection is also 0 so we will put it in equation 2 because uh, sorry equation 3 because equation 3 is about deflection so when you put x is equal to 0 clear y is equal to 0 so this term y will be equal to 0 so 0 is equal to this term will also 0 because x is 0 so multiply by any term will be 0 plus c1 into 0 uh, this term will be 0 c1 this will be 0 plus c1 into x will be equal to 0 plus c2 is equal to 0 so we will get c2 is equal to 0 there. Now we will put another boundary condition at x is equal to 0, theta is equal to 0. So we will put it in equation 2 because this is for slope. So if you put theta is equal to 0 because dy by dx is equal to theta, so theta is equal to 0. So left side of equation 2 will be equal to 0, x is equal to 0, this term will be 0 and this term will be equal to 0, so c1 will also be equal to 0. Now we have c1 and c2, you can put the value of c1 and c2 in equation 2 and 3. So we will get EI and dy by dx will be equal to theta is equal to minus PLX plus PX square over 2. And equation 3 will become equal to EI into Y is equal to minus PL x square over 2 
प्लस पी एक्स क्यूब ओवर सिक्स क्लियर सो इफ यू डिवाइड दिस इक्वेशन बाय ई आई ऑन बोथ साइड सो वी विल गेट वाई विल बी इक्वल टू माइनस पी एल एक्स स्क्वेयर ओवर टू ई आई प्लस पी एक्स क्यूब ओवर सिक्स ई आई Similarly, if you divide the equation of slope by e i on both sides, so you will get theta is equal to minus p l x over e i plus p x square over two e i. So this is equation of slope, and this is equation for deflection equation of deflection clear and this is equation of slope now in part first we were asked to find equation of elastic curve which is for equation of slope so this y if you simplify this and take the constant so this y will be equal to minus p x square over 6 e i into 3 l minus x so this is you can use this equation as well and you can use this as well so this is is required equation of elastic curve now we will move toward the second part that is deflection at free end y b clear so a uh, deflection at free end means at x is equal to l we have to find y b clear so put here x is equal to l so when you put x is equal to l in this equation so y will become equal to minus p l square over 6 e i into 3 l minus l which is equal to minus p l square over 6 e i into 2 l 2 will cut with this 6 and this will be equal to minus p l cube over 3 e i so this is deflection at point b r free end so this there is a negative sign which means that y is downward clear so if you do not want to write minus sign so definitely you will put a arrow downward but it is also okay now in third part we have been asked to find the slope at free end clear so slope at free end will be equal to at x is equal to l you are going to find the slope clear so you will put in this equation clear so if you put Uh, it in this equation theta b will become equal to minus p l square over e i plus p l square over 2 e i so that will give you p uh Minus p l square over two e i, and this will be p l square over two e i. Clear? So again, there is a. You can see. You can take the LCM. So two e i. Because so it will be minus p two p l square plus 
p l square clear so when you solve it it will be minus p l square over 2 e pi so theta b or uh, theta at free end is equal to minus p l square over 2 e i so this means that theta is negative so it will be in if you write it so theta b is equal to p l square over 2 e i and this will be clockwise theta b will be clockwise so this is the solution of our problem 9.1 we have calculated the equation of elastic curve we have find out the deflection at free end as well as slope at the free end so i hope you have enjoyed the problem uh, thank you for watching